So now we've talked about kind of the properties of our assets and our bases, and we've talked about strong versus weak and all the different types of things we can be looking for there. We can now drill into and kind of think about our types of reactions for our acid and base chemistry. And for our acids, again, we're looking at things that start with the hydrogen out in front. There are three archetypes or three types of reactions that our acids can undergo. The first type, we've actually seen it quite a bit. Our first type of reaction is an acid plus a metal. We did this in Chem 1 back when we created hydrogen gas. And this is kind of the, the dead giveaway. If we think about a, a single replacement or single displacement reaction, which we've got some compound with a H plus ion, reacting with a metal, well, the, those ions aren't gonna stick together. As a result, the hydrogen gets the boot, gets DAS boot, gets kicked out. We end up with hydrogen gas, which we can actually ignite. If you remember the bark test, bark from Chem 1, and a salt is the other product. So you always get hydrogen gas and a salt when you're acting acid with a metal. Uh, give me an example of this. I think this is the reaction we saw. Uh, if we're thinking about our ions, so hydrochloric acid, strong acid, dissociates completely. So we've got an H plus, a Cl minus, reacting with a zinc. Well, zinc is a metal. Metals tend to form positive ions. So the plus on the hydrogen and the plus on the zinc, mah, they're going to electrostatically repel. The zinc positive ion is going to attract the negative chloride ions to form our zinc chloride. And the hydrogen gas buddies up because it's diatomic and is released as a gas out of our reaction chamber. And so we always get for acid plus a metal, hydrogen gas and a salt. A salt we use as a loose term for any kind of ionic crystal. Ionic compound, it's a salt. And so when you see that word salt, don't just automatically assume NaCl, that's the salt. That is also an ionic compound, sodium chloride being a positive and negative ions. Our second type of reaction is an acid plus a carbonate, CO3. If you think about the stable compound that we have for carbonates, we know that carbonates like to form carbon dioxide, CO3 changes to CO2. And so that's kind of our giveaway for our carbonates. Acid plus carbonate is going to form carbon dioxide, gas, salt, and water. Uh, example here would be the classic just classic baking soda and vinegar. Vinegar is your acetic acid, weak acid, we drink it. Here's your acetic acid reacting with sodium bicarbonate, aka baking soda. The hydrogen from the acid gets with the oxygen from the CO3 to form the water. So here's where our H's and our O come from here. We also have an extra H coming from that bicarbonate to make our water. The CO3 changes into CO2. That's where the carbon dioxide gas, the bubbles in your volcano come from. And then the leftover bits, the sodium and the acetate ion form our salt, sodium acetate. And so you always get CO2 gas, salt, and water. Our last reaction type, which we've seen before when we think about lab safety, is an acid plus a base. This is our classic neutralization reaction that we see not only in lab safety, but also for our acid base titration. More on that to come. Whenever you react an acid with a base, you always end up making water and a salt. Example here would be sodium hydroxide. There's your base. It's got that OH group in there. Reacting with hydrofluoric acid, hydrogen out in front. The H from the acid and the OH from the base make the water. And the leftover bits, in this case, the Na and the F, get together to make the salt, sodium fluoride. And so when we start to look at our acid reactions, look to see who you're reacting with and what you're most likely going to form then as our H particles try to find somebody to be more stable with. Uh, cool. A couple examples here to look at. Let's take a peek at those. So our first example of our acid-base reactions would be an acid. In this case, we've got two molar hydrochloric acid and a metal. And so our, our metal here is our little bitty, and it's kind of hard to see here. We'll see if we can get some resolution. It's our little bitty magnesium metal pieces. So they kind of have that luster, you know, like metals do. Uh, so this would be a single replacement or single displacement reaction in which our hydrochloric acid comes in contact with our magnesium. The hydrogen gets das boot and comes off as a gas. As a result, ooh, here it going. So there's our hydrogen gas being produced, leaving behind our magnesium chloride, which is then aqueous, which dissolves into this, the water solution that came with the hydrochloric acid. 
Our second reaction archetype would be an acid plus a carbonate. So here we've got a little piece of chalk, right? Chalk, chalk, chalk. This is calcium carbonate primarily by um, chemical composition. And so to this, if, again, gonna use the same acid, we've got hydrochloric acid. I'm gonna add a little hydrochloric acid to our calcium carbonate. We again have a gas produced. You can see the bubbles of gas coming off. Carbonate, most likely gonna turn into carbon dioxide. And we get then a salt left over uh, along with a little bit of water that is produced. And so our second reaction archetype, acid plus a carbonate. Uh, you're probably familiar with this one. You've probably done this. This is the quintessential science fair volcano demonstration, in which case we use acetic acid or vinegar with our sodium bicarbonate. That would be your baking soda. Uh, our third reaction archetype that we can see for our acids is an acid plus a base. And so here I've got a little stir bar. Uh, sorry, let me move it so you can see it. A little stir plate there, a little stir bar at the bottom. If I turn that on, we can get that stir bar uh, moving for us. Cool. Which just agitates our solution. To this, I'm going to add an indicator because both our acid and our base are colorless. And if we want to see a change, we're going to need an indicator. So hydrochloric acid, in this case, we're using our two molar sodium hydroxide. Both of these are colorless, which means we need an indicator to be able to see if it's acidic or basic. We're gonna use phenophthalene in the presence of water. It's colorless, but in the presence of a base, in the presence of a base, our phenophthalene turns this wonderful magenta pink color. Cool, so sodium hydroxide currently in the beaker. If I add some acid, both of these are two molar, so we should see some pretty vibrant color changes. If I add some two molar hydrochloric acid, I'm gonna go kind of slow here because I didn't add very many drops of my base. Boop. So my acid has now neutralized my base. Now I see a color change where I go back to that color change. If we can get it just right, I think we can do one drop at a time. One drop of base, whoop, bright pink. One drop of acid, neutralize. Changes back to a pH above seven and our phenolphthalein goes colorless again. I can do this all day. One drop of base. One drop of acid. Acid and base, neutralized to form water and a salt. In this case, it would be our sodium chloride. Theoretically, if I knew it was exactly seven, you could drink it, but I don't trust myself. I didn't do the math well enough to be able to have that high degree of confidence. Cool, three types of reactions that we can see for our acids and our bases.